All right. Um, good morning. It's still morning before lunch. So um, good morning, students. So today, as you know, we have to do a, uh, a check in so that your teacher knows that you're here in this event. And if you have questions, this is a great questions document that you can reference to. And um, the evaluation form, this is how we give you credit and this is your attendance. And um, if the QR code doesn't work, we'll have the bit.ly link and the actual link in the chat. Uh, be fully present, pay attention. This is a good time to ask questions. And again, uh, submit your evaluation. This is how, you, um, how we give you credit and a requirement for high school to graduate in Oregon. And let's have Frank to talk about his career and his path um, leading up to his career. So Frank. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I've always thought of myself as an electronics tech. Um, basically, I joined the Navy and worked on electronics and airplanes. Thought it was pretty cool. Got out of the Navy, started doing that uh, for the civilian world and uh, for, did a bunch of jobs. I ended up working surprisingly at the post office for 16 years uh, doing, that type of uh, doing that type of thing, just fixing electronics, fixing machines that process all the mail. I also worked at uh, the Veterans Hospital fixing, um, well, that was, um, it fixed a lot of stuff, but mostly uh, a lot of install for a lot of electronics for veterans, for veterans health. Um, and now I'm working at Intel, uh, fixing machines that make wafers and test wafers and things like that. Um, you can do quite a bit of jobs that you don't know that exist um, that, in these types of things is if you have a, uh, a broad spectrum um, uh, education in some aspect of things, like I have it in electronics and mechanical work, I can usually apply that to anything that plugs into a wall. And uh, so can anyone else. Is, uh, yeah, that's kind of a nice little intro. Do you want me to keep talking? I have no idea what else I should be how, I don't know how deep I should be getting into this. So um, did you thought of becoming an electrician when you were in high school? Yes. Uh, yeah, I just like electronics. Um, electricians were a little more separated from my idea of what I wanted to do because my, my father is an old carpenter and elect back in the 90s, it was a while ago, um, Electricians were just people that just, you know, put wires in houses and, and you know, set up. Uh, why, that's what I knew what it did. You know, they just set up basic wiring and built out, you know, uh, uh, a, a, a type of uh, uh, a wiring layout for a building, a house, a home, a business, that kind of thing. Nowadays, actually being an elect electrician would be one of the best things. I mean, they make like $45 an hour, like I think at the minimum, and they're wanted all over the country, like everywhere. And the reason, the simple reason is because the, the uh, uh, well, the unofficial simple reason is basically lawyers can't decide on whether they want somebody who knows who is an electrician or is somebody who is not to install all these things that sort of need need all these power requirements and sort of don't that's the short answer but hey the electricians are are because of this are just going okay i will happily take all the work and i mean i actually knew a couple of friends that had become electricians especially later in life where they're like they didn't even do it right out of high school and that is something that you can do um, right out of high school, you can go and f find out about, you basically look online in the state of Oregon, how to become an electrician in the state of Oregon. And you're probably going to get involved with either a union or, or a community college. And uh, you can become an electrician and you can start getting paid pretty quick. And I will say it's not easy work. It's not easy work. You're going to be, you're going to get you're going to get bloody knuckles. You're going to get sweaty. You're going to get dirty, um, but you're going to get paid pretty well. And you're never going to get uh, laid off or something. This, 
just being an electrician because the society, American society has not figured out how to handle the growth of putting electrical outlets instead of one in a room having six in a room because that's what it was when I was a kid and now they want electrical outlets everywhere and for all these devices that we use and all these machines that require power all that requires a lot of electrical engineering and electricians where you can just I mean the world will be at your doorstep um, for that type of thing. So what is your day-to-day -day work? What is my what? Your day-to-day, -day, like what do you do when you come into work? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so nowadays, uh, now that I work at Intel, I work in the dye sorter area. So they, um, I, cal I help calibrate brain boxes that they use to uh, test uh, chips with. So I come in and we talk about, hey, what happened last night with a previous shift and, uh, you know, what things are working, what stage of fixing things are at, you know, like if you have, they, the, there's like 17 steps on this thing that you have to do to get this machine uh, fixed or, you know, calibrated correctly. And um, so we get that information from the previous shift and we go, okay, we got to, set all these things up and start working on it. And that's what we kind of do. And then, you know, we take our breaks and have lunch for a moment and we try to work it so that the machine is doing its thing while we can step out and go get a bite to eat or, you know, a drink or something real quick. And then, you know, come back in and, and make sure things are working. And, and sometimes you're just troubleshooting. You're like, oh, this, this uh, process didn't work. Let's see what happens if I take this circuit card and this circuit card and switch them. And does the problem move with the circuit card? And then I know, oh, if it did move, then it's the circuit card. And if it did not move, then maybe it's the housing that the circuit card is part of. Um, so that kind of thing. Uh, what are the working conditions like? Um, well, at Intel, they're really nice, guys. I, I got to say, um, they are very nice. Uh, the, everybody is pretty uh, nice and, and uh, really smart. I got to say, working in a couple of different uh, industries and different types that actually uh, people don't talk about that enough. It really matters about the type of people you're working with um, and oh, college degrees and licenses. OK, can you this is right after high school? OK, cool. Um, but the type of working conditions. So where I work, I work in a in a clean room. It's a uh, it's a it's the light version of a clean room. It, the, the stuff you see on movies and TV, clean room, it's, it's that. Okay, there's no, there's no about it. It's not that hard, really. It's just like putting on extra stuff, you know, and you get used to it and you work around it and then you, you know, but the cool thing is, is working at Intel, it, you're not getting really dirty. You're not sweating that bad. Um, you're not getting bloody because uh, there are other jobs in the in the uh, STEM fields and outside the STEM fields, that you definitely are, uh, you're gonna do a little blood, sweat, and tears. Um, but at Intel, it's pretty cush. I, I will say. I mean, I can, I can step out and go use the restroom wherever I need to, and and I can go up and get a drink of water or a soda for you know pretty much whenever I want to. There's a coffee shop right nearby. Um, it's the it's kind of it's it's just. It is what you see it, it is, and it's that nice. Okay, electrical, I mean, excuse me, education requirements. Um, so when I, got out of the, when I got out of high school, um, I had a little bit of uh, ed, uh, elect, uh, electronics education through high school. I had like two years of this like skill center thing at the Owen Sabin Skill Center thing in Clackamas, because I grew up in uh, Milwaukee and Clackamas. And so I, took that and I really learned that I liked electronics. I didn't know what to do with it. And at that time, I don't think anybody really knew what it was gonna be because this was like right before the internet kind of happened. And uh, so I joined the Navy and uh, worked on electronics with airplanes. And I love working electronics and airplanes, that's great. So um, I learned a lot of stuff about that. It's a lot of troubleshooting skills, a lot about how to work with people, about time management, about how to, uh, regulate yourself 
uh, others, some leadership skills. There's a whole lot of things, you know, I'm not trying to push the military on anybody. They can, if they want to do it, they can do it. But you'll learn a lot there. But I did a lot, I learned a lot more about electronics there and a lot, I got a lot of troubleshooting experience. Um, and then after the Navy, I went and worked at Fujitsu uh, Microelectronics in Gresham. And I mean, I was out of the Navy and I got a job there. It was like the next month. And now they, uh, that was right when 2001, the tech bubble popped and about a year later, every, all the, everything was closed down. So I wanted to continue my education in electronics. And that's when I got a two year degree in electronics. Now I got a two year degree because I was taught, I was conditioned, I was, I don't know, I have a little bit, of, it's a little, not the most friendly thing, but I uh, did not, I was taught that engineers basically sit behind a desk and that's all they do. Now I have since learned that's completely false. Um, I kind of regret it because I think I would have become an engineer just so I could do a little bit more. So this gets into, um, it's, this is a little harder because it's, it's more about people's perceptions of not you, but what you've done, because if you've gotten a degree, you've done something. Okay. That you can get, you can get deep into the murk water with that idea, but, uh, engineering degree will never hurt you. Um, it, you'll learn quite a bit and you can always use it. Now, walking into Intel, they, they want something. They don't, they want something. They want to prove that you're just not some nobody that hasn't walked in. And I, that's kind of with most places they want, they want to see that you've, uh, that you have some type of skills. It doesn't have to be electronics. It can be just, Hey, I can manage myself throughout the day or I know how to work with people and not upset them or not get upset by them. There's all these little people skills that, you know, any employer is gonna want. Um, but as far as education requirements, I mean, getting a two year degree is not that hard um, relatively for whatever field you want. But I got in electronics, I could usually, I could probably apply that to go chasing after an engineering degree if I want to but uh, just life has gotten in the way for me. So hopefully it doesn't for you and hopefully you get to do it and you can find out all kinds of things. There's like, if you walk around anywhere in your life and you see an electronic device, okay, somebody had to design that, somebody had to repair that, somebody had to make it better. There's like six jobs just in every device that you see, somebody built those things and they're not somewhere in some far off land. There's some, they're, they're basically in an industrial park that's probably pretty close to wherever you live. You know, somebody in your neighborhood works in one of these industrial parks and they fix stuff and they work on things and then you can too. I don't know if there was any other questions. Um, did I miss some? Um, oh, education. Oh, here we go. Uh, the position I got, they wanted, a, they wanted at least to see a two-year degree and they got me in because I have a lot of experience with electronics. Um, do you have to like working with your hands? You will feel much more comfortable working with your hands if you do so. Um, because you're gonna be, you know, grabbing the device and putting it over here and maybe put, taking a screwdriver to it and doing something, a thing to it, or do, you know, things. There's now, if you're gonna be doing like high level engineering work, there's a lot of good chance you're gonna be mostly just interfacing with a computer and telling other people to, do something while you figure a lot of things out in the computer. But you don't have to, but it it's gonna like, like if you don't mind get your hands a little dirty, then yeah, then you're gonna like this, uh, that kind of thing. More high school courses that you've been most important for your uh, occupation. Okay, so yeah, um, I was thinking about talking about this. So the, so unfortunately, and I'm gonna say this because math is important. I hated math when I was in high school. I didn't like math until I got into college because it had a practical ad ad application. Um, and uh, I'm just, it's just the way maybe it was taught to me. Maybe it's just the way they teach it or something. I just got a bad luck about it. And then, um, uh, but I learned that once I can use math to actually accomplish things, 
then uh, it became, oh, this is useful. That's okay, great. This is great. These are like keys to the doors, you know, but this, the thing, the open doors that you can, you know, that you can get things done and accomplish things. That's what math is for. So, and if you can do any type of um, electronics thing, then it won't hurt. You'll learn a lot more. You'll learn a lot of things that are really hard to, for me to define to you, to speak out. It's really hard. I don't really know how to say a lot of work, but there are going to be skills that you're not going to learn in high school. I mean, you learn how to talk to people and deal with people and, and you learn how to, you know, absorb what the teacher's teaching you and then, and then regurgitate that in a test, right? That's kind of the, I mean, if I, I don't mean to be uh, dismissive or, or some kind of negativity to any teacher out there because they have a very difficult job. I understand a little bit, um, but that's, those are skills that you learn in high school and you don't learn troubleshooting skills. And that is something you're gonna learn trying to fix things. Like I'm sure some of you have had to fix your great aunt's computer or, or printer or something. And maybe you're like, oh yeah, I got the router working and I just had to replug it, plug it back in and then undo this and do this and reload a driver. And that's a troubleshooting skill. You just gotta be able to break things down and categorizes, uh, cat categories, excuse me. And, uh, and figure out, okay, I want this, this, okay, here it is, that has nothing to do with it, here it is, oh, there, I got it fixed, you know, that kind of thing, that's troubleshooting skills, okay, what aspects of your job do you like the least, uh, so I touched on that a little bit, is, I'm, I'm 45, guys, I'm, a, I've been around the block, I'm, uh, so I can see where there are definitely problems with how we categorize human beings in what they know and what they do. And that seems to actually get in our own way as a society, and that's just my opinion. So you'll find a lot of people that are really smart, that really don't uh, end up having a lot of responsibility in some jobs because either they can't communicate very well or the, they don't wanna deal. And that doesn't help them. And it definitely, it only hurts the society if you can't use that person uh, as much as they want to be used and to do something wonderful, right? And you'll see that in um, uh, aspects of things where some people have, you know, they've, they've, they've got all this training and they're not as useful as somebody who has learned it on their own. And then some people who have learned it on their own, they're like, well, you've learned stuff, but this other person had a training and they can't, they can't talk to each other. Or I feel like I'm a little bit of both. I'm like, you know, if you got along with you, you guys would be way better than I ever was. Um, that kind of thing. That's kind of a job aspect thing I like the least. The best is just getting, hey, um, hey, it's not about my opinion, it's about troubleshooting. So it's like, hey, I did this, I did that, I checked this, and then I replaced that part and then it works. So I have the right answer every time. It's like math, you know two plus two is four, right? But, and I don't have to come up with some, oh, I had to come up with like a, a six page, you know, essay on something. I, writing is not my forte, I, you can tell. Um, but maybe it is for you guys and that's fine. Um, that's what I, I think I would like the best. Um, what do you like best about working in Intel? So everybody is really smart. One of the, one of the things I really like the, in a difference, so I, I spent 16 years at the post office. Now, the people there are actually, you know, most of them are pretty good and honorable and well, not everybody is wonderful in every, in every uh, group of people, you're gonna find some people that are less great than others. Um, but the, the post office, we have some definitely some rough ones and it was uh, kind of, it became a really depressing place to work. And that's the biggest reason why I left there. Um, and I'm letting you know, cause everybody I heard before that they want to know how much people make. Well, at the post office, I was fixing all the machines that process the mail. And I was the highest one of the, I was like the highest paid person that you could be. It's all unionized there. So uh, it's, it's, it's public knowledge how much we make, but I made like $95,000 a year there. Now it took a few years to get there. It took like nine years to get to that pay. But I mean, you'll get paid pretty well um, doing that type of thing. 
I, I would say you guys you get paid pretty darn well. Um, I, I have heard that uh, some high level engineers get paid like 300 grand a year. So that's a big thing. Um, so what I like about Intel, all right, sorry, I got a little distracted there. Uh, what I like about Intel, everybody's really smart. So when I was at the post office, people, while people are honorable and, and, and good in a lot of ways, and a lot of people are really smart, they're just, it's not enough of them to build a really good cohesive uh, uh, place where you can really bounce ideas off of each other. There's only like one or two people and be, because they're, they know they're the smartest person in the room, there's a bit of an ego. When you're surrounded by a bunch of smart people, then you just, you ask questions and then they ask questions and you get these great thoughts and these, uh, and you just, I swear when I, when I worked at, and I went from the Navy to Fujitsu, I swear my IQ went up like 60 points. I mean, I, I don't know how much obviously, but I was like, oh my God, I, I know so much stuff and I've learned so many things just in one year. And that is that feeling because I just started with Intel here just two months ago um, is coming back. I'm like, oh yeah. I'm with all these people and I'm talking about things that are so much more invigorating, so much more challenging to think about and to talk about. So that's one of the best things about working at Intel is you're gonna be around some really smart people. And because they're not the only smart person in the room, they're not gonna have an ego about it. And so they're gonna let you ask questions and then you get to, you get some questions asked and answered. And then maybe they ask questions and you're like, well, I don't know, but that's an interesting thought. I never even thought of that. Or maybe you know the answer and that's awesome too. I heard you guys are willing to hire seniors out of high school. Is that true? I don't know guys, I really don't know. The job I got, I picked a senior tech position and I got it. I did apply for 25 jobs at Intel because I was ready to move on from the post office. And I got, I got three replies out of 25. Um, so yeah, if, if you're just a kid out of high school, they're not going to know you from any other kid out of high school. And so that means they're probably going to think about, it's a human aspect. People are going to think about the things that stick in their mind, which is a human thing is that you end up thinking about the worst things about kids in high school. It's not against you personally. It's just how humans think, right? It's not an Intel thing. It's just everybody. They're just going to be like, oh, teenagers, you know, you're just, you're going to get that. So they need to, they need to see that you need to give them a reason to go, oh, this is more than just the teenager I thought he was or she was, you know, you gotta, you gotta give them a, a little bit of something so that they can go, oh, you know, you know, and then I think, I think you, I mean, that way you give yourself a fair shot because without um, a little something to, to just get them to break them out of their thought process, I mean, there's, I mean, the world is kind of running against you. Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat it there. Um, um, if you don't mind uh, me um, intervening real quick. Um, so I was in contact with someone with uh, Intel and they said that they are going to be hiring for Intel awesome. manufacturing technicians. Um, and so it'd be kind of working in, you know, a factory uh, or manufacturing plant. I'm going to go ahead and put the link uh, for students to if you want to sign up to attend the hiring expo. And um, I know that they're going to be hiring on the spot. Um, and I so if you go there, go with your resume, you know, you say, I, I want this job, you know, that kind of puts you out there. It's kind of like, you know, Frank, you know, make sure, make sure that you're, you're putting yourself there compared to another student who's probably just going to apply online, you know, so emphasize yourself. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, and I saw someone else put a question. Uh, what skills should the student do now to be able to be, get ready for this career? Um, so uh the idea i got in with a lot of troubleshooting knowledge and experience so if you can find some type of electronics courses or some uh they also want besides electronics because i'm a little more hardware than software 
there's a lot of software stuff out there. So um, if you can do some software work and show that, because usually with software work, you can, you if somebody gives you two minutes, you can show them that you built something with software on a little laptop. And then, so I would say if you, if you want to do hardware, go chase hardware, but that's kind of hard to show. Um, you can talk about it, but it uh, it takes a long time to really get the experience to uh, to be able to convey that you know a lot of knowledge. But if you can show them with a device, unless you build a little like a little handheld robot, you can show to somebody or something. It's a little hard, but with software, you could probably open up a laptop and show somebody something that you built on a web page or something. Um, and so I would say some, some type of electronics or math or some software, uh, some, excuse me, some, some uh, software style, you know, uh, classes, some, um, um, maybe some IT work, those types of things. I would think those are the things that you want to chase. Outlook for this career. Is there a shortage or oversupply of people in this career today? I think right now there's a shortage of everybody in the last, what, year and a half <laughs> for everybody for everything. Um, I was mentioning earlier, there is a serious shortage all over the, uh, all over the nation uh, of America for electricians, for licensed electricians. Um, you're licensed through the state that you work in. There definitely is a shortage in Oregon. Um, I'm pretty sure there's one for, um, as far as I've been hearing, there's a, definitely a shortage everywhere that I've heard of. Um, so you're, for an electrician, you're definitely gonna find a thing. I, now, I again, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Like, so when I got out of the Navy, I worked at Fujitsu for about a year and then the tech bubble popped. And uh, then there was no tech jobs for quite a few years. And so, yes, there are times that in these tech jobs that, that you're gonna have these times of, feast or famine where there's just no there's going to be no jobs like i went through it i lived through it um so there's definitely one of those things uh but usually you can find a decent job doing something um but it sometimes it's difficult and sometimes it's really easy what's the challenging task you experienced so the most challenging task i've surprised uh, i found surprisingly is actually people um, so an object is an object. I have to have some toothpicks here. So this toothpick is just a toothpick, right? So if I have, if it's a, if this phone, it's just a phone. That's all it is, right? It'll do things you tell it to do and it won't say no. It won't get tired. I mean, it'll lose battery, but that's a, that's a device. You can charge that, right? It, the objects are just objects, right? You can build them. You can modify them. Those, those can be challenging tasks. But the, I have found the most interesting things about the challenging things is actually working with people. Because, hey, you know, maybe I can uh, uh, work on a machine and fix it, but it'll take me like all day. But if I can get a friend of mine, a coworker to come help me work on it, but he's working on his thing, maybe I can go help him and help him get it done real quick. And then he'll come over and help me and then we'll, get it done and it will seem easier. Maybe it'll take the same amount of time, maybe it'll take more, but it will seem easier when you're working with other people. That is usually the most challenging thing is working with groups of people and trying to get them to all coordinate together and get it to, to work. There are um, the latest and greatest machine at the post office that I work at. Worked at. Um, there's a machine that's bigger than your house and bigger than my house, bigger than like, it's, about the si it's like half the size of a city block. And uh, um, it sorts like a million packages an hour and it's ginormous. And you need like 12 people to work on that thing all at the same time. And you have to, the machine has to be, some parts have to be work, running and working so that you can check other things, but you can't have other things running because maybe you're standing on a conveyor belt. You don't want that to move because you don't want to be standing on a moving conveyor belt. You can get hurt. So, you know, there's, there's time that you have to like, hey, okay, I'm gonna do this and you go over there and work on that thing. And then when I'm done, I'll go over there and I'll help you with the other thing. And so it's all these things about working with people and getting 
all the objectives, all the tasks that you want to complete done and working together. And sometimes it's great working with people and sometimes it's really challenging. I'm sure you've had, I'm, I hope you've had some type of group uh, uh, tasks, um, things that you guys have to do in school and you get assigned with somebody you really like and probably somebody you don't like. And trust me, both experiences are good because you're gonna learn something from it. Um, does this career provide opportunity to get balance time, work and family? You know, yes, I actually have something to say about that because I'm 45 and I just got married last year. Uh, first time I've ever been married and my wife is pregnant and is gonna have a child in a month. And my boss who just had his second child last year or something like that, he was able to take off two months off of work. And he's telling me to take the entire three months off. My boss wants me to not work. You hear that? I mean, I have never heard that before. I have never heard that before. And this is pretty amazing. So I would say Intel is pretty good at saying they really want you to have a work and life balance. Um, they want me to take care of my family or, you know, and, and make that grow and make that a positive experience instead of just push it off to the side and keep coming to work where I have uh, either seen it or avoided it or been around it or heard about it from other people. Um, it's, there's a lot of little dark corners in the world, guys. Um, I hope that you can avoid them and not have to experience them. Um, so far, I have not seen that at Intel and most tech companies um, and a lot of big companies are starting to realize that you know they don't aren't keeping people around if they don't treat them really, really well. So you're walking into something pretty darn good, guys. Um, yeah, there's that. Uh, what else is career, working with your hands, education requirements. I talked about a little bit of that, working conditions. Uh, become an electrician. Yeah, I did. I have to talk about that. And then, oh, okay. I think I've talked a lot and um, probably too much about all these questions here. Oh, there's a new one. What is your advice to students who want to be in this career? Um, if you can find something where you can learn some troubleshooting skills, work with software or hardware, um, like I was able through the Milwaukee High School in Clackamas, the North Clackamas uh, Education County, whatever uh, whatever they call the the North Clackamas County Education, whatever they call that. Um, they had a thing, you could go to a place called the Owen Saving Skill Center. And you would learn these like real world skills. So I learned how to take apart electronics and make lights work. And it was, looking back, it was pretty simple stuff. It was, you know, hey, let's look at, take these LEDs and solder them together and and you can make a pulse and that's kind of cool. And here's a square wave and this is what a sine wave is. And while those are great things to learn, it gets you familiar with some things that you can go cool. And in that, when you build something and it doesn't work and it probably won't the first time you build it, you're gonna to have to troubleshoot and figure out what did I do wrong and you have to fix it. And those are the things that you really wanna learn. Those are the things that you're like, okay, how did I, I screwed up somewhere where did I screw up? And you're able to define it and, and figure it out and go, oh, it's right over here or it's right over there and go. So troubleshooting skills, uh, those types of things. Um, if you can do something along with high school, otherwise, you know, maybe you can take a college class. I don't know what Hillsborough has to offer, guys. I'm kind of sorry. I don't I didn't read up on that, um, but I'm hoping they have something. Um, I wish somebody like me would have talked to me when I was in high school. I definitely know that. Um, but it's just uh, do some software uh, classes. If you can find some hardware classes, I know you can find some software classes. Those are everywhere, it seems like. But hopefully you can find some hardware classes. Uh, um, maybe at the, uh, isn't the Rock Creek uh, PCC over there? Maybe there's another community college over there. Um, that, you know, I know they do some type of uh, stuff, but you want to get some hands-on work, um, you can walk into a community college and take a class, and they'll be happy to have you, and they'll let you mess around with stuff. Now, you, they'll be like, oh, yeah, you don't know anything, but here's how you do it, and, but that's, that's going to be easily one of the most friendly places a high school student can walk in, 
And I'm pretty sure you could walk in. You don't have to have graduated high school. Now, I'm not saying you should be a dropout. What I'm saying is maybe during one of the summers, uh, you want to go and do take an extra class or talk to them about that. You can talk to the people at community colleges and they'll talk to you about, oh yeah, you want to do these. We have all this stuff. Here you go. And maybe you just plan for it. Or maybe you take a little bit of a class or maybe you just get a chance to talk to one of the teachers for an hour. And then they give you a little bit more knowledge and then you can make a decision that best suits you. That means you get to make the decision. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, Jason, and, Jason Community College. <laughs> um, and then for the students, we um, at School to Career made a, uh, we compiled a list of resources um, for like, um, you know, you can get coding camps and you can find more learn more about manufacturing because there's a lot of roles um, when you work in a manufacturing plant. Um, so feel free to explore. I just put that in the um, chat. And so you guys are able to see, you know, um, what you guys can use. Um, I know there's a lot of free courses out there. It's just a matter of finding um, the right ones. And of course, community college is always um, on the cheaper end. So, um, but I think that was all the questions um, students had. Um, I want to say uh, thank you for joining us today. Cool. Thank you. So yeah. um, I will stop the recording.